Hello everybody and good evening. Welcome to another wonderful episode of Become a Better Man series. Become a Better Man series, a special program from the admirals to help all of us become better at who we are and at what we do. My name is Tunde Disu and it's an honor for me to have you on this program today. Thank you so much for all your support, all your encouragement, your emails, your texts, your contacts, your feedbacks. It has been a wonderful journey I, and I must say I'm honored. I am blessed to, to, to be hanging out with people like you. Thank you so much. Today is a loaded day. It, it's a... <laughs> Today is going to be wonderful. Thank you, uh, Sanjo, Omonike, Oke, Okonkwa. Thank you, all of you, for joining us and being part of this program. It, it is going to be a wonderful time today. We are all going to go back and, 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 and just feel, wow, because I have been, I've been brewing on this. I've been thinking about this. I've been praying about this. Today's program has just really got me excited, and, and it's going to be wonderful. It's definitely going to be great. So you are welcome. Fasten your seat belt. This is going to be a wonderful ride. So ah, you can see, <laughs> I'm excited. I am excited. So thank you all of you for everything and your support till date is it's it's appreciated. Thank you. I really honor each and every one of you for your time and everything. And I've taken on board some of the feedbacks that we've heard so far and uh, we're working on them and we'll make sure they are reflected going forward. And and for those that are already uh, online, please let's start by sharing the program. Let's quickly go and share the program. Call the people you need to call and and let them know we're about to we're about to take off. Uh, it's uh, it, 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 it's such a wonderful time. Can you believe? With two months have come and gone. Two months have come and gone. We this is our ninth, the number nine program we're doing. Imagine that. Where has time gone? But we thank God you are here. We thank God I'm here. We thank God this platform is still ministering and being a blessing to each and every one of us. And, and, and to say the journey has been wonderful will be an understatement. So thank you for all your support. I, I appreciate you. Tonight we are looking at another topic. Another topic among the series so along the series that we've been doing become a better man now uh, we may have to change that topic very soon we may have to say become a better person because now we have ladies amongst us and so we need to recognize that so we're working on that thank you thank you thank you thank you for all of your uh, all of your all of your support really appreciate it today's topic we are looking at become a better man, rejuvenate. Uh, re the word rejuvenate just means to, to reenact or reconnect or revive something. And that is what we want to look at today. We want to look at what is, the, uh, what is that aspect of your life and my life that we have let sleep and we have almost abandoned and yet it's a vital key it's a vital additive to becoming the person that god wants us to be so that we can deliver maximally thank you Allah Taiwo, for joining us so that's what we'll be looking at today but i, I just want to put this off front i won't use the word rejuvenate a lot the word you'll be hearing mostly from me is play playing play or playing because that is what I want us to, to tap into today. Now, let me ask some few questions just to, to prepare us for where we're going. When 
when you look at your life and I look at mine, I just want us to answer this question. Are you exhausted by the crushing yoke of daily obligation? Are you waking up in the morning almost dragging yourself out of bed? Have you, have, has it occurred to you that your life is lived almost in a triangle? The home, work, and maybe church, or home, work, and something else. And you are constantly within the axis of this triangle. When was the last time you had a free time on your hand? Free time on your hand. And if there was ever a time when you you had that free time, what did you do with it? What did you do to occupy that free time? When was the last time you played just for playing sake? There's no prize to be won. There is no trophy at the end. There is nothing to gain. You just play for playing sake. When was the last time? When was the last time? Thank you, Anessi, for joining us. When was the last time you just had fun playing? When? You see, we all have been found guilty of this charge because to a lot of us, the answer to that last question would have been, uh, maybe when I was 5, 10, was the last time I actually played to enjoy the play, not to win anything, not because there's something at stake. And that is the essence of today's program. We are adults. But the question is, because we are adults, does that mean we are exempted from playing? Please, I need you to help me along because there will be a lot of self-examinations tonight. So I, when I, I'm asking the question because I want to get a feedback from you. Because we are adults, does that mean we have now been exempted from playing? Kunle said, no, we have not. The funny thing is there's a new trend building. There's a new wave coming up. There's a new a new with gathering momentum and it is adults are finding their ways back to their kindergarten schools adults are going back to preschool to learn how to do coloring to learn how to do show and tell to learn how to those little plays those little things that we did when we were when we were children when we were really small a lot of adults are going back to reconnect and retap into that now the question i ask is why would they do that why maybe you have been doing that maybe you have heard about it maybe you are actually in it yourself tell me why why for instance in brooklyn in u.s an adult preschool has been opened a preschool for adults not just for adults, but office workers and executives. A preschool has been opened for them so that they can go in there and do preschool activities like show and tell. Can you, can you, can you just try and imagine this with me? The, direct, the, the finance director just left the office instead of going home or going to the club or to the pub He's heading straight to a preschool to do some coloring, to do show and tell. Thank you, Paul, for joining us. Thank you, Tunde Otilo, for joining us. Here in the United Kingdom, because you might think, well, that's the thing with Americans. No, here in the United Kingdom, a studio has been opened where adults go to jump and lie down in ball pits. You know, like the children, they have a big tent and it's filled with plastic balls and they can jump in it, they can dive in it, they can... That is what some adults are doing here in the UK. Ade Jobe, thank you for joining us. That is what some adults are doing here in the UK. Just to reconnect to what it means to, to have fun. What it means to play. What it means to, to just... 
be, be normal, for lack of better term. In India, a laughter club has been opened where people just go to laugh. They just go there to laugh. And you know, la laughter is, 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 is medicinal. So they are not just laughing because it's medicinal. It's part of this new wave that is gathering momentum of adults reconnecting back to their youth, their, their childhood experience of what it means to play. Now, the question you probably be asking is, what's wrong with these adults? Don't they want to grow up? I mean, come on. What are you doing in preschool? What are you doing uh, painting, uh, uh, throwing catch, and, and all of that? What is the issue with you? According to a research, according to a, 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 a research that was carried out, play or playing can actually relieve stress. It can boost creativity, improve brain function, and even improve our relationship with other people. This is a research that was done. Actually, in the U.S., there is an institute, institution set up called the Institute of Play. And they have done a lot of research and a lot of findings, a lot of experiments to try and come up with what it means to play. Thanks for joining us, Julian. It's an honor to have you. Thank you. What does it mean to play? People are re retouching and re they're going back to that to, to, to touch again into it. Hey, Uncle K, thank you for joining us from Canada. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Pastor K, thank you too for joining us. People are reconnecting with learning how to play again like children. Psychologists and researchers said when children play, when we play as children, it is a way of developing some part of ourselves. Now the question is, if it is working for us when we're children, why do you think it's not working or it won't work for us now just because we are adults? In fact, a lack of play time, a lack of play time in children is seen as a major health. Have we not seen that everywhere in the world? We're talking about children being obese because children don't play anymore. Apostle Vitalis, thank you for joining us. Because children don't play anymore. Rather than playing, they are engaged in other things. So lack of play is actually causing health issues for children. And if it is, I'm sure it is also affecting adults. I'm sure it is also affecting adults. Play or playing is on the decline. In fact, there was a survey that was done, and if they found out that since, since 1955 up to the year 2000, listen to this, between 1955 and the year 2000, children's free play has declined continuously because adults have become overly sensitive about don't injure yourself, don't do that, uh, protection this, and protection that. Now, there is something wrong with being protective. I'm a father to have three children, and I, I will give the last drop of blood in my body to protect them. But have we overdone that? Because listen to this. Over that same period, between 1955 and the year 2000, over that same period that play has declined, the mental health of children and adolescents have also declined. Thank you, Topic. Thank you, Lekon. The mental health of both the, the children and the adolescents have also declined over the same period that the play has also declined. I think there's a correlation here. If it is affecting them that way, you and I can agree that it is affecting you and it's affecting me as adults. By abandoning play, we, abad uh, we have abandoned as adults when we abandon playing for the sake of play, for the fun of play. When we abandon that, 
we are abandoning an important part of our lives, an important growth and development part of our lives. We're leaving it out. And if we want to become better men, if we want to really become these better men that we want to be, then we need to revisit or at least consider this aspect of our lives that we have left unattended to. Thank you, Lekon. Thank you, Buki, for joining us. Playing is not just for kids. It is as beneficial to them as it is to us as adults. The only thing is, as adults, we take ourselves too seriously. We take ourselves too seriously. So the question now is, what is playing? When you hear the word play, what comes to mind? Give me some suggestions. Put something on the screen. When you hear the word play, what do you hear? Thank you, Pastor Alexander. Thank you for joining us. An honor to have you, sir. When you hear the word play, what comes to mind? What do you, what, what do you, what, what picture is formed in your, in your head, in your mind when you hear the word play? Or let me put it this way. Right. Uh, hey, Baba Joshua, thank you. Let me ask you this way. What was your favorite type of playing when you were a child? What was your favorite type of playing when you were a child? When you were a child, yes, play, you need leisure time to play, but what exactly, what activity did you engage in during your leisure hour? What did you do? What was your favorite play when you were a child, when you were little? Because to some people, the next thing they're thinking of football or, or, or tennis or, or hockey or handball or netball, all those are quote and unquote play. But by the time I give you the definition of what it means to play, you will agree with me that what you did was not playing. Climbing, well, yeah, football, okay. But this is the definition of play. So I need you to factor in your activity to see whether it was playing or not. What I mean, what you are writing now, whether it is considered as a part of or is a, a, a kind of play or not, you will see. For anything, any activity to be regarded as playing, these are the three factors that must be present. Number one, it has to be voluntary in the sense that you are not obligated to do it. You will say all, all the things you've written are voluntary. You are not obligated to do it unless it's part of your physical education curriculum in primary school or, or, or thereabout. But outside of that, you, you did it voluntarily. Pastor Alexander said trash. Now, the second thing, the second factor that will qualify the activity as a play is this. It, it, it has to be flexible. It has to be flexible and can be changed or manipulated during the course of that activity. It has to be flexible. Thanks, Edwin. It has to be flexible. You can change the rules. You can change the tactics. You can change the approach during the course of doing it. If, it, if, it, if that is not possible, then it's not playing. And finally, it has to be enjoyed and it has to be fun. So the three factors that you must consider to consider for anything to be recognized as play or playing is it has to be voluntary. You are not obligated to do it. It has to be flexible. You can change or manipulate the rule as you go along. It has to be enjoyed and it has to give you some fun. So as you can see, when you look at football, for instance, yes, you can do it voluntarily. Yes, you can enjoy it. It can give you fun. But you can't change the rules as you go along. Any activity that is done within the parameters of rules and regulation is not actually a free play. What we're looking at here tonight, everybody, is the type of activities that you do freely. Freely. Almost without rules. When we were growing up, come on, you, you, you remember, when we were growing what rules do you, what were the rules that guided your climbing a tree? Nothing. What were the rules that guided your uh, rolling your bicycle tire? Nothing. What were the rules that guided you running 
you and your friend running from one end of the house to the other, who touches the wall first. No, you just run and have fun and laugh and, and do all of, that. was playing. That was playing. When you think about these three characteristics I've just talked about, you will agree with me that right now we don't have anything that matches or that meets those three criteria. Do you know why? Because our modern world is work obsessed. Our, the modern world we live in is work obsessed. We lost play in the hustle and bustle of life of this report, that deadline, that project, that contract, that assignment. In the course of doing that, we have lost out on playing. These days we spend our lives between our jobs, our kids, on Twitter, Facebook, to catch the latest trend. That's what we spend our lives doing. Thank you, sir. Why is play so important? Why is playing? Why is it so important, especially in the life of an adult? Come on. I know some of you are thinking, Tunde, oh, slow down, slow down. We are adults now. Come on. We are supposed to be matured. We are supposed to be responsible. We are supposed to carry ourselves a certain way. We don't want to, to, to embarrass yourself. Come on. Look at me. Look at my position. Look at my title. Look at the... Yes. God bless you with all of that. But a, a chunk, part of your life, is dying because you stop playing. Because you stop playing. Why is play so important in a child's development? Number one, play doesn't have consequences in the way that real life does. And that is why I say the, there are no rules, no consequence. When we were growing up, we would, we would play like I don't know, tree climbing, for instance. We will do things like running. We'll go hunting. We'll go uh, playing. The, uh, uh, we'll do role play. We'll go on adventure trips. No rules. We just do them. And as we go along, we make the rules and we, we counter the rules. We nullify them. We change them. We manipulate them. That was playing. Playing is how children explore the world around them and even themselves. It's by playing. Playing helps children with the capacity to make decisions, to solve problems, to build and experiment and transform. That is what playing does for children. I am saying if he's doing that for them, he's doing it for us. We just don't know. And this is an area where we are missing out as adults. We are missing out as adults. Lebo Gang, wow. How are you? Good to have you on board. Thank you for joining us. More generally, for both children and adults, playing really gives us a chance to build our imagination. Have you seen a little girl Sitting down in a corner with her doll, how she made a whole drama, just herself and her doll. That is the power of imagination. That is the ability to play that a child is tapping into. Imagine if you and I can do the same thing in our workplace. How much this will add value to us and the value will be transferred to our businesses and our work. A little girl will have a doll. She will name that doll. She will speak to that doll. The doll will speak back to her. They will have a good conversation. They will talk about issues. They will discuss everything. Just the two of them. Remember, this doll can't even talk. But yet, this girl is having the fun of her life. That is playing. That is playing. When was the last time you did that? Kunle Ajala said, play is important to healthy brain development. It is through play that children at very early age 
engage and interact in the world around them. Thank you, sir. In playing, when we are playing, when we play, the fantastical, the, the, the imagination becomes real. The real, the, the reality becomes the imagination. When we are playing, we try out things. We try out new, new hypotheses. We try out new, new issues, new, new stuff with no consequences. You can see I, I'm excited about this tonight. Please go and share this message if you have not. Please, let's share it. It will bless a lot of people. I, I, I wish I can reach out to everybody and just get this, this, this program in front of them. Because as adults, we have, we have mortgaged the essence of, of the part of our life where playing is, is, con is, playing is concerned. We have mortgaged it for the next report and the next schedule and the next meeting and the next program. We have. The one thing, that the, one of the things we have lost as, as a people, as a society, is the understanding that exploration, creative thinking, are what brought us to where we are right now. They are the things that brought us to where we are. They are the things that help us to, 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 to invent some of the things we are enjoying today. The Wright brothers were playing around. And we ended up with an aeroplane. Imagine if they were if they were not if they didn't have the freedom to just experiment and try things out. How would you go from from London to to New York if the aeroplane was never invented? It is during playing that we express our inner imagination. Thank you, Osagi. It is during playing that we express what is on the inside of us. Remember, we are created in the image and in the likeness of God. And one of the attributes of God is his ability to create what is not there. Now, if we have the same elements, the same characteristics as he does, then we should be able to create some things. And creation, creating those things will happen primarily in the course of playing. In the course of playing. Playing or play matters no matter how old you are. Irrespective of your age, playing matters. The only thing that has changed is the stigma that comes with playing. Because we associate playing with childhood and therefore we associate playing with child, child, childishness. I'll say that again. The stigma that has come, what has taught most of us from playing, from expressing, that, that playing part of us is because when people talk about playing, it is for children. So when you as an adult is seen playing, people say, don't be childish. As if after you go past a certain age, then your, your ability to, to play should cease and stop and, and just be cut off. The more we are in situations where we feel it is okay to fail, the more we are likely to stop. Sorry, the more we are in a situation where we feel it's not okay to fail, to make mistakes, the more we are likely to stop playing. Because in playing, there are no, no rules. So no mistake. Where there is no rule, where there is no law, there is no offense. But in playing, in actual playing, no rules, no, no boundaries, just free flow, everything. Therefore, the, the concern about what if I what if I if I fail, what if I did it wrong, what if I didn't make it's not there because nobody is there judging you. But your life, my life has been completely dominated by 
what would they say? How would they think? How would they feel? What would be their reaction? What would that make me of? And because of that, we have become, we have, we have, be, we have been caged. It's not just the animals in the zoo that are caged. We, our lives are caged because everything we do now is at the mercy of somebody determining whether we should do it or not, whether we have done it right or not, or whether we, we are even good enough or not. But with children, don't bother them. They just play. Like you did and I did when we were little, we just played. But as we grow older, we thought, no, we can't do that anymore. Who said that? Who, 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 who sold us that, that bunch of lies? Because our lives, your life and my life will be enriched greatly to the degree to which we live a balanced life. And part of the balance of our life is not more work, it's play. Somebody once said, all works and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Imagine that. Just, just listen to that phrase. All works and no play makes Jack a dull boy. I mean, Jack is working for goodness sake. You would think Jack is, will be smart. You would think Jack will be excellent. You would think Jack will be the bravest. But yet, the saying says, if he's working, he's not playing, he's a dull boy. My uncle Joe Awolo, thank you for joining me again. I honor you, sir. Murewa, thank you for joining me. Oliyemi Adetayo, thank you for joining us. When we talk about playing, people are, people are thinking football, tennis, uh, things like that. No, that's not what we're talking about. Free-flowing playing. Running around with nothing to hold back. No, no consequence. No consequence. You know the funny thing about we adults? The funny thing about adults is that It's not that our hobbies have changed. What we like to do, how we like to do it, they haven't changed. What has changed us is the structure of the life that we live now. The life that dictates when to sleep, when to wake up, when to play, I mean, when to go to work, what to do, how to do, where to do, with whom to do. Our lives have become so structured that anything that is not considered quote and unquote, productive, is not allowed. It's not regarded as an element that should be seen because we are adults. We can't be childish. Playing is for children. Really? Okay. Playing is a crucible, not just for self-discovery and freedom, but for joy. The joy of Playing. The joy of playing. Unfortunately, as adults, we don't have much, much pure joyfulness in our lives anymore. And so, we, have you seen, especially this part of the world, you, you go to, hi Murewa, you go to the park. And when adults see children just running riot and Tumbling and falling, they, they just like, oh, they want to join in, but then they look around. Other adults are there, prim and proper. Really? If we're, if we're longing to play as adults, if we are, and the truth, if you ask yourself, and you are truthful to yourself, there is a part of you that is longing to play. If we are longing to play, why is there such a stigma against adult playing? Where is, where is, why, why have we not got a, a park or an open field where adults can just go and just run around? Oh, I miss, I, oh, I miss Dunstable. Oh, I miss Dunstable. You go, there's a place in Dunstable in Bedfordshire called Dunstable Downs. Open air, open field. You see adults. Uh, 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 playing with, with their kites and, and running and throwing frisbee. Oh, it, it's, an, it's a wonderful, wonderful place. Why don't we have more of that? 
where adults can just go and play. The world we live in now is so constrained, you are supposed to answer your emails within 30 seconds or else you'll be, de you'll be deemed negligent and irresponsible. If somebody asks you, how are you? The only answer you should give is busy. Busy. And then when we don't want, when we, we, we the only, <laughs> The only way we know to play these days as adults, thank you, Shil. The only way we know to play these days as adults is to sit down on the couch and look at the screen. Somebody said, sitting is a new cancer. Everybody's got it. The time we should take a walk down the, down the, the street and just Look at the, especially this spring season, look at what's going on. Look at, look at flowers budding. Look at daffodils coming up. Look at beauty of, of creation all around us. No, we're too busy because we can't play. People do better when they are acting, when they are moving, than when they are just sitting and staring. People do better. When they are moving, they are acting, they are doing, they are mobile, than when they just sit down and they are staring. Technology has taken over a lot of our loose attention. We are constantly in front of a screen, like we are now. It's a TV, it's a mobile phone, it's, a, 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 it's an iPad, it's a computer. It's... We are constantly in front of a screen. Constantly in front of a screen. Thank you. Can you say Lego comes to mind when I hear play? It's one of the ways to play. Just enjoy it. Enjoy it. Please enjoy it. <sighs> I don't know if this is somebody say something to me. I don't know if this is this is this is landing around your neighborhood and you you feel the the ouch and the pinch because i i've been feeling this for the whole week as i was preparing this i just every now and again i feel the pinch myself so please tell me how are you what's your view about what i'm saying am i am i just rambling or do you think there's some 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 facts and some some truth in what i'm saying please let me know i'd like to know from you These days, when people are stressed, thank you, Pastor. Pastor Alexander said, really, it is good. Thank you, sir. When people are stressed, when people feel pressured, when people feel the world is, is crowding in on them, guess what they do these days? They either go to smoke or they go to drink. And that is how smoking becomes the... the, the thank you, Areto Kumba, for joining us. Everybody is now smoking. Everybody is now drinking. Now they said you can't smoke cigarettes in an enclosed place. Now everybody is smoking vapor. Deborah says, sir, you are highly blessed. This is the truth. Thank you. I appreciate that. But imagine instead of smoking, instead of drinking, imagine if you, all you have to do to lose those stress, to, to get away from under that, that weight on your shoulder, is to just go to the park and, and sit on a swing and, and swing. Or to go to the park and just do some rock climbing. Or run about or chase your dog or chase your spouse or, or your children. Imagine if you can do that. How you will be healthier. You will save the money you could have spent buying the cigarette or, 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 the, or the drink or the beer in the, in, the, in the pub. And you'll be better off for it. Monique said, thank you so much. It's true. We are busy all the time. No time to play. We should loosen up a little bit. I, like, I agree with you. I completely agree with you. So if you see an adult, this is a question that I would like some answers to. If you see an adult who is playing the real play, not 
playing as we we have become we have come to know but they just playing for playing sake oh mr temila did this thank you for joining us thank you sir if you see an adult just playing what would you say to that adult i want to know forget about this teaching so far but if you see an adult say this morning you 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 met your neighbor you saw your neighbor just having fun and running around, you will call the police to say, this man needs help. I mean, some of you will have said, Joe, are you all right? Is everything okay? Is the family all right? Some, of, some people will have called the, the security on him. But if I see him, knowing what I know now, I will say to him, thumbs up reignite the child in you touch get hold of that part of you that has been lying dormant Kemi Abiola, thank you the stigma around play is there but it is our job as adults it's our responsibility responsibility to fight back because soon we're going to look at the benefits of play and you'll be amazed you'll be surprised some of the things that we have let go by not playing just just wait, just hang out with me a little bit more so it is our responsibilities as adults especially if we want to really become better people men and women if we want to become better men if we want to arrive at the destination of this journey and know that we have the, 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 the trophy of, yes, we have arrived and we are better. Having traveled this far every week, gaining new strength and learning new things and adding new values. If we want to arrive at that end, knowing that we have done it well, this is one of the things we need to fight for. This is one of the areas we need to defend. This is something we need to uphold and not let go for whatever reason. We need to regain our ability our ability to play as adults. We need to regain our abilities to play as adults. What are some of the benefits that will accrue to you as an adult when you play? Thanks, Linda. What are some of the benefits that will accrue to you? Listen to this. Play is not just essential for kids. It can be an important source of relaxation and stimulation for adults as well. When you play with your spouse or you play with your children, you fuel your imagination. You become more creative. You develop, not you alone, everybody involved will develop problem solving abilities. You gain emotional well being. All this will accrue to you just by playing. You can't get that if you sit 24 hours in the office working. You won't get that. Actively playing with your kids will not only improve your own mood and well-being, it will make your kids smarter, better adjusted, and less stressed. If you won't do it for yourself, do it for your children. Do it for your children. Just because we are, we are adults doesn't mean we have to take ourselves so seriously and make life all about work. We need to play some. We need to do some playing as well. So why should adults play? Let's quickly look at that. Why should adults engage in playing? Adult playtime is a time to forget about work and commitments and be social in an unstructured, creative way. Playtime for adults is a time to shut down the office and the work. Shut down the commitment. Does that make you irresponsible? No. But every now and again, you need to let it be on the ground and you engage with yourself. And one of the ways to do that is by playing. Is by playing. We've just read, we've just seen earlier on that when you play, you become more creative. That's what you need to solve the problem at work. Be more creative. Grow your imagination. Develop new problem-solving abilities. All that will eventually show up in your workplace. But you need to develop those 
on the field of play. And when you play, the focus is on the experience of playing, not on the trophy or the or the gain or the benefit that will accrue at the end of it. it it's not about you scoring the, the, the goal of the month. If you do, fine. But the essence of playing is for you to enjoy the experience, to, 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 to just be in the zone of playing. Playing it could be things like just goofing off with friends. Have a laugh. When was the last time your laugh and your jaws were aching? Have a laugh. Don't take life too seriously. Have a laugh. Share jokes with your co-workers and your family. Go to the beach and throw a frisbee. Chase your dog with a ball or something. Ah. Or just get on the bike with your spouse and ride. I remember when we were living in, in the northern part of, of, of England. Sometimes I'll come back from work and I'll say, guys, let's go out. And my wife will say, where are we going? I said, nowhere. We're just driving out. Really? Yeah, we're just having a drive out. I will drive maybe for half an hour, maybe half an hour or whatever. Just drive around different places and then come back home. Now, I'm as guilty as charged. I haven't done that in a long time. But I'm saying these are some of the ways by which you can just let work remain in the office. Come back home and be at home and play and enjoy being around and being playful. By giving ourselves permission to play with the joyful abandonment of childhood, we will reap the health benefit throughout our lives. So I just said, if we can loosen up a bit, truly there will be less tension around us. Even marriages will thrive better as a result of playing with your spouse. God bless you, sir. I agree with you. Can you see how much we have, we have let go? In our quest to become better men, we need to bring this back. We need to bring this back. These are some of the benefits that play or play will give you. Number one, play will re relieve you of stress. Play will relieve you of stress. How? When you play or when you are playing, it triggers the release of a chemical called endorphins. This chemical is a natural feel-good factor chemical in our body, but it will only be released when you are playing. Endorphins, this chemical, promote an overall sense of well-being and can even temporarily relieve you of pains, maybe pain in your joints. When you play, that chemical, maybe I'm not pronouncing it right, but it's called en en endorphins. It will be released in your, in your body, in your system, and it gives you a, a feel-good factor. You feel good about yourself about that time. You enjoy it. You are relaxed. The stress is off your shoulder. Playing improves your brain function. Playing improves your brain functionality because it prevents memory problems. Playing prevents memory problems. The social interaction of playing with family and friends can also help ward off stress and depression. So when you do things like playing chess or, or puzzle or just doing activities with, with people around you, and the, 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 again we said when you play, it, it, it makes you to be creative, to, to think logically, to, to be imaginative. All these are brain exercises and they will help you. They will add to your health, being, to your well-being. Playing stimulates the mind and boosts creativity. When you play, it stimulates your mind and it boosts your creativity. When you are playing, you learn a new task. You do it better when it is fun and in a relaxed and, and playful mood. You do it better because nobody is looking over your shoulder to see, oh, no, 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 no. No, this is a free-for-all. You're just having fun. 
Playing will improve your relationships and your connections to others. When you play with people, it will improve the relationship that you have with them and strengthen the connection that you have with those people. When you share laughter and fun with, with people, it fosters empathy, compassion, trust, and intimacy with them. Oh, please, somebody say something to me. I, is, this, I, I, is this adding any value to anybody? Can you see the importance of playing now? Can you see how much this will add to, to us as men when we engage in some playing activities rather than just focus on work, 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 work? Now I'm not le I'm not I'm not saying we become irresponsible. I'm not saying we abandon our responsibilities. I'm not saying we spend our whole life playing. That's not what I'm saying. I am saying that in the midst of all these uh, obligations and responsibilities and duties and all of that, let us have also time to play. It helps. It helps. Playing will also keep you feeling young and energetic. Playing will make you feel young and energetic. Now listen to this. Somebody, this guy called George Bernard Shaw. George Bernard Shaw said this. He said, we don't stop playing because we grow old. Rather, we grow old because we stop playing. How profound. We, we didn't stop playing just because we are older. No, we are older now because we have stopped playing. How profound is that? Playing will make you, will keep you feeling young. Thanks, Brad Gibson. Playing will keep you feeling young and energetic. Playing will boost your energy and your vitality. It will improve even your resistance to some diseases and will make you feel your best. That's what playing will do. When you play with, 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 your, with people you are in relationship with, for instance, it's an effective tool for keeping your relationship fresh and exciting. When you play, it keeps that relationship fresh and exciting. It brings joy and vitality and resilience to that relationship. That's what playing will do. When you play, it is also a tool to heal resentments, disagreements, and hurts. Playing heals resentments, disagreements, and hurts. Because when we play regularly, we learn to trust the people we are playing with. And then we feel safe. And trust enables us to work together better. It opens, up us, it opens us up to intimacy. These are some of the benefits that playing will, will give us. Jesus. Play teaches cooperation with others. It's a catalyst for positive socialization. If you want to play with something, if you want to really be social with someone, just learn to play with them. Learn to play with them. The definition of adult does, adult does not state you cannot play anymore. Just because you're an adult doesn't mean you cannot play anymore. At the same time, the definition of play does not state it is only for children. The definition of adult does, adult does not mean you can't play anymore. And at the same time, the definition of playing does not mean it is only for children. Quickly, let's look at how the different ways you can play. Let's quickly look at some of the ways you can play. Number one, set goal of playing some more. Set, you know, if you want to lose weight, you set goal. If you want to achieve a milestone, you set goal. If you want to... Uh, uh, 
uh, write a project, you set goals. If you want to do a marathon, you set goals. It's the same thing with playing. Set goals for your playing. Set a set goal to say, I am going to play half an hour in every day or an hour or whatever it is. Set a goal for your play. If you don't, if you don't set the goal, you won't do it. Number two, decide what play means to you. Your playing might be different from my play, but you have to decide how what is what does it mean to play for me? And whatever that means, engage in it, enjoy it, and do it. Do it. We have just listed some of the benefits that will accrue to you as a result of playing. Then go ahead and play. Go ahead and play. Another way you can play is to combine fun with other activities. Or some of your daily routines, combine fun with them. Do them play, playfully. And if you don't know what to do, shop around. There are so many dance clubs around. Look for the one that dance. Maybe you like Zumba dance or, or uh, uh, whatever dance you, you like to do. Just find the one that works for you. Maybe you like to go to the gym. Go to the gym and enjoy it. Don't just go there to build muscle and get six packs. No. Have some fun in the course of doing it. Have some fun for crying out loud. For those of, those of us out there and in here, if you have a set date with your spouse, say every Tuesday is a date night or whatever, your date night doesn't have to be just go and watch movie, have dinner, or, or have a takeaway. You can include playing in your in your date night. You can include doing something together that's outside of uh, uh, watch a movie and uh, and and eat pizza. Do something. Have a go and ride. Take your spouse to to the park and push him or her in the swing and run around and wrestle each other to the floor on the grass. Come home and comb the grass out of your hair. Whatever you do, just enjoy your play. <laughs> Hey, my brother Jamie Garande, all the way from Hawaii. Thank you, thank you for joining me. I really, I'm, I'm honored. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Now, if all of these don't reckon with you on how to play, this one will work. Hang out with children. Spend time with children. Oh, they will crack you up. They will make you. You will have to play. You will be forced to play when you hang out with children. You, will ha you have no choice but to play. Because children, they just love it. They enjoy it. Now we have seen some of the health benefits, some of the psychological benefits, some of the, 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 the relationship benefits, everything that accrues to them for playing. It's no surprise that they enjoy doing it. So if you, are, if you don't know what to do, Hang out with children. They will help you. They will help you. I have a list here of some of the type of play that you can engage in. Things like water balloon, kite flying, dancing class, picnic with games. I'll, it's a long list. So what I'll do is, after this program, I'll put it on, the, on my Facebook. You can see it there. You can download it. You can do whatever you like with it. But these are some of the things that we all have to engage in so that we can, we can really make a go at our lives. Thank you, Joshua Patterson, for joining us. Please, if you have not shared this, this program today, please go and share it. If this program has been a blessing to you, if, you have, if, if this has touched you in a way, if he has ministered to you, if he has been a blessing to you, share it with somebody else. Also, it will help you have a copy of it on your timeline. You can, maybe you get to work and you're telling your friends about the importance of play and they say, oh, get out of here. What do you think you're talking about? You can say, okay, sit down, watch this and then tell me. 
But if you don't have it, if you have not shared it, you won't have it on your timeline. So please, if you have not shared this, this program tonight, please go ahead and share it. And I thank you in advance for that. Thank you. Just before we finish, last week I said on this program we will talk about the date and the venue for our Become a Better Man seminar. Become a Better Man seminar. Uh, it's going to be uh, a day that we all gather in one place and just really have fellowship one with another. We will pray together. We will have questions and answer session. We will have one-on-one. -on -one. We'll, whatever we can do just to, to be together. It, it's going to be a great fun for, for all of us. So last week I said we will, that today I will, I will let you know the date and the venue for, for, for the event. Well, I'm glad to let you know Subject to all things being equal, we're still working with the venue uh, uh, people, but for now we have a provisional booking for the 13th of May. The 13th of May 2017 is the provisional date. The venue is Praise Embassy Community Center. Praise Embassy Community Center. The address is number 33A Bexley Road in Erith. Uh, the postcode is DA81SH. All this will be on my Facebook, so you don't need to rush to get it. I'll put all of this on my Facebook. But let's let's put this date in our diaries. Let's clear our diaries. It, it's it's our day as as a group. Uh, uh, let's just be together and just have fun and and put some faces to the names and maybe. Let's just come together on that day. And now the question is, what do we all have to do between now and then? Between now and then, these are some of the practical things that you and I can do toward that day. In our prayer times, let, to prayer time, let's remember that day and just commit it to God that God will, will manifest himself mightily in our midst. Uh, uh, he will answer prayers, he will heal people, he will deliver people, he will help people to just be whole uh, uh, on that day. Number two, we, like I said, there will be questions and answers, and so we'll have some moderators in our midst. Let's also remember them in our prayers that the wisdom of God will be made available to them, that they will not answer those questions based on their own understanding, but on the prompting and the leading of the Holy Spirit so that we'll all go home better than we than we, we, we came. So number three of things we can do towards that day is we can you you need to start sending you need to start sending in your if you have any question or or questions over some of the uh, the the programs that we've covered or just any question in general Please, don't wait till that date because it's going to be a fun day. Send in your questions early. Send your questions in so that we can, we can start believing God together for wisdom to answer them. Send in your questions and on that day, bring your prayer requests and we'll, we'll put everything together. We'll pray together. We'll lay hands on them to, for God to intervene and come through for all of us. Another thing you can do is there will be a flyer coming out very soon. Please share this flyer on your timeline. Talk about it among your friends and your contacts. Let somebody benefit from it because of you. Be a blessing to somebody. Share it among your contacts, among your friends. Invite people. And let's, let's just let's go and have some fun, guys. Uh, and, and again, uh, we're not restricting this to just the men. That we will have the, because from the very first program, we've had ladies in our midst, and they've been an integral part of this team. So on that day, it won't just be men. We'll have some ladies in our midst. It will just be a family together, like we've been on this program for the past nine weeks. So that's the same elements and the same flavor that we'll have on that day. So please 
let's talk about it, let's share it, let's promote it, and when the flyer comes out, let's go ahead and make it our own event, and God will, will, will help us with the day in Jesus' name. I have had a great time, and I hope you have. But you see, it is not just about what we've said today. It's about what you do with what we've said. I am encouraging you to please take on board some of the things we've been saying on this program for the past nine weeks and going forward. Let's, let's start putting them into practice. That's how we will become better at who we are and what we do. Because that's the essence of this whole program. Finally, it's here. If you have not got a copy of my book, Elisha Project, The Privilege of Serving Leaders. I, I, this book is good, if I say so myself. This book is an excellent book. And I encourage you, I admonish you, get a copy of it. Get a copy either in Kindle format or in paperback. Again, holiday season is, is upon us. A lot of people are taking time off work or going on holiday. Take this with you and read it. Because I am so sure it will be a blessing to you. So if you have not gotten a copy, if you have not bought a copy of Elisha Project, The Privilege of Serving Leaders, please do get yourself a copy from Amazon or send me an, a message. And I, I, I have some printed copies in the house. I will send it to you at the same price that it is selling on Amazon. Uh, uh, postage paid. I, I won't charge you extra for postage. But please get a copy. It will be a blessing to you and to your friends if you are so generous to, to buy one for your friends. Thank you, guys. It has been an honor spending this time with you again. Thank you, all of you, for honoring me with your time. I do not take it for granted. I appreciate it. I'm honored that you will, you will spend an hour with me. I'm honored that you will listen to me. I'm honored that you will come back again and again. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. And God himself will replenish each and every one of us for this seed that we are also in, into becoming better men and women. Until next week, when we meet again, this is Tunde Disu once again saying, we are not stopping. We are not going to stop until we, uh, we arrive at that destination called better man and better woman. Until next week, God bless you. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye.